everyone and welcome back to another video from Inside Wire. As you can see, I'm in a different location today. I have an absolutely big box in front of me, which is an LG 4K 86 inch TV. Now, before we get into this, remember to hit that subscribe button and press the like if you've enjoyed this video and leave me a comment down below if you wanna see more like this. So first, let's just look at the size of the box. This, I'm actually stood upright behind this box at the moment and my arms apart, I still can't reach either end of the box itself. So let's have a look at the front of it round here. You can see at the top, it says it's uh, slightly ripped at the top, but a web OS, uh, 217 centimeters, 86 inches diagonally from one side to another. You have the Magic Remote, this is one of the first manufacturers that are compatible with Apple HomeKit and it works with Apple AirPlay. Looking on the other side over here, you can see down here you have the real 4K IPS display, you have the A7 processor 4K generation 3, uh, AI picture with AI sound, um, the ThinQ AI dashboard, True Cinema Experience, we'll have a little look at that later in this video, and Unlimited Entertainment, so that's your smart TV features such as Netflix or Amazon Prime, etc, etc. So let's not waste any time, let's start by unboxing this, or let's start by opening up this right here. So just at the top up here, you can see there's a couple of stands that come with that are labeled A and B. So just looking at the front, you can see that it's nicely well packaged to ensure there's no damage. And the silver wrapping is quite thick. So if we have a look around here, you can see it's actually well packaged. So looking down here in the packaging, you can actually see there is some guides down here, which we'll go through in a second. We have the remote, the smart remote. We have some screws for the stands, component and RCA leads. We have some batteries. We have a cable strap and we have some energy stuff. What have we got here? It's just showing you how to mount it, product details and safety and regulatory information. Also within there, it shows you how to set up Alexa, uh, registration of your guarantee, the guarantee itself and the product. As you can see here, um, as I showed you earlier on the packaging, it says the letter A on it. There's an A just here, and this is where the first bracket would go. So I'm just gonna open this up. So it looks like, yeah. So just to show you, you've got a little clip on the front on here, just there and there. So that goes in and then you just pull it down. And then with the pack of screws that I showed you earlier, you can install that. So there's three screws for each one. First one goes in here. There we go, that's one. That's two. And the third one goes in here. There we go, so that's, that's, part, that's the A part of the stand. So we'll do the B one now. So you can see here it says B, and this is the stand that we took earlier. So this is B. So I'm just gonna open this up. Then we have our screws that we took from the pack earlier. And same again, you've got the two hinges at the top so they can go in and then down. Okay, again, three, again, so three screws. So you can see on the back of the TV itself, just here, you've got a LAN port, 
You've got two HDMIs here which clearly state 4K at 120 hertz. So we'll be testing the Xbox Series X with this. Uh, we have two USB ins, we have a satellite and a, and a normal antenna cable in. We have an optical out and we have a AV in and a component in. So for some of the older connections, you have them there as well. And just to the side of that, you can see we have another two HDMIs. These are not HDMI 2.1s. We have a USB in and we have a PC MCIA card slot. In terms of power, um, just going around the side here, you can see that there's a power cable that comes with it, which is already linked into the back of the TV. Just for you ASMR lovers, we can just pull this off as we go. And hopefully that was oddly satisfying for you. Now we have the stand mounted, let's go ahead and turn the TV on. And as I mentioned, this does have WebOS on it. Okay, so it says press the OK button, so we'll do that. And then we just go through the standard setup. So English, United Kingdom, um, we click next. So I've gone ahead and plugged in a network cable and something into HDMI 3. So we just click next. Uh, we read through the terms and conditions. If you want to have a read through this, uh, we click next. So um, click agree all. And then we click next. Yeah, there you go. So it's recognized I'm using Virgin Media in HDMI 3, so we click next. Uh, set top box only, HDMI 3, click next. Quickly fill this in. And there we go. So first time use completed. So it looks like we have the LG channels here, BBC iPlayer now on Prime Video. So we'll click close just here. And let's see what comes up. So it looks like it's going to go to HDMI 3. There we go. So let's just have a quick look at the settings themselves. Uh, we'll go down to all settings. And there we go. You can see down here. Let's have a look. So we've got the we've got picture at the moment. We've got the eco mode setting of the picture. Uh, let's see, so there's sports, so these are the different ones, so you can see uh, Vivid, Standard, Eco, Cinema, Sports, Game, HDR Effect, Filmmaker, Expert Bright, and Expert Dark. So, We'll just go back to eco for the time being. Um, and so you've got the aspect ratio, energy savings, and let's have a quick look at what the additional settings are. So uh, eye comfort mode, so adjust color temperature automatically to reduce eye strain. Um, HDMI ultra deep color. So HDMI one, two, three, four, all support deep color. You can turn the feature on and off. Instant game response and filmmaker auto change mode. So let's go to sound, you've got You've got Dolby Atmos, uh, you've got the sound settings in here, so you can see balanced ultrasound equalizer. So you can see down here, you can connect to your home devices if you've got any here, USB storage, media server, um, HDMI 1, 2, 3 component and AV, so you can switch between there, sound share, airplay, and connect mobile device. So the one thing I wanted to test out is the airplay settings so let's click on airplay so it says enter a code so we'll enter that in so five four eight zero 
press enter and there you go. So we now have a device that's connected via AirPlay. So this is literally my laptop at the moment. You would go into here and you can turn AirPlay on and off. So that's quite simple and easy to set up. It's connected to the same network, so that's great. So I can actually AirPlay my display across. Uh, the other thing I wanted to test out was Apple's HomeKit. So just gonna grab my phone once. So once we go into the AirPlay settings, uh, we can go to set up HomeKit and you can see actually there it's telling you to set up a device. So we just click, just gonna show you the phone itself as well. So we click the plus, click add accessory. Um, just gonna pick that up. So yeah, there you go, add to home. It's picked up the TV. And there you go, that is fairly instant on setting that up. So let's go down to, let's just put it in the living room now. Click continue. Just go LG TV. Continue. That's fine for now. So that's quite cool. The functionality is so when the last person leaves the home, turn off the TV so we can turn that on. Click continue and click done. So you can see right here that the LG TV, if I turn that off, that's turned off. And if I press it again, it's turned it back on. So that's quite cool that is that you can turn it off by that. So I just wanna show you this on the phone. I'm just gonna say, hey Siri, turn off LG TV. There you go, that's turned off. So, hey Siri, turn on LG TV. And there you go, that's turned back on. So we're into the gameplay of FIFA 21. So I set my settings to 120 uh, hertz, uh, 120 frames per second, sorry, and uh, we are playing at 4K. So I've been playing this for a few minutes and I feel that it's not making the full use. Obviously I understand this, the generation has come out halfway through a season but I feel there is a lot more that FIFA can do at the, um, with using the next gen and its, um, all its power. Um, loading times are definitely quicker. Um, my, if you're looking at my gameplay, I'm not really that good at this game, but other than that, I mean the realism and you can see the graphics on the screen are really good. Um, it is using some of it, but like I said, I think that the next generation is gonna be the one to see how much um, it really makes use of it. I really hope you found this video useful and informative and enjoyable. I've enjoyed putting it together and playing around with FIFA, of course. Once again, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and leave your comments down below. All the links to the products I have used are in the description below. Feel free to check them out. This is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.